my name is Gordon and this podcast is to, made to help students transition into new projects during their fourth year studies. The topic of this podcast will be the off-axis parabolic concentrator and we'll cover the basic design information, um, the basic principles behind the general design and the useful information needed when working on it and designing extra parts and components and basically using the experimental setup for your project. To start off, I'll explain the concept behind the solar concentrator. Incoming sunlight is focused by the dish into a fixed focal point located at the front of the system. Um, the principle behind solar concentration is the conversion of area ratio, i.e. how much sunlight is focused into a small focal point by a large dish. Um, the novelty within this design is that there is no shading effect on the dish, meaning that full power can be converted and that there's no need for auxiliary systems like cooling or power transportation as they are found in industry applications. Um, a very good use for this experimental rig is the wide testing range of solar receivers, for example, CPVT, HCPV, thermal, etc. Should you require any more information on numerical modelling of such and more receivers in general, Please watch the podcast made by Thomas. In order to make full use of the sunlight, the parabolic dish needs to be directed directly towards the sun. This means that the rig requires solar tracking mechanisms. To understand how these mechanisms in place work, let's look at the dish. Incoming sunlight would be coming in directly from above and be focused towards the front of the dish. Um, this means that the dish's central axis through the middle here needs to be focused di or directed directly towards the sun. Um, two angles are commonly required to track the sun. These are called the zenith and the azimuth. The zenith is commonly measured from directly above the observer, so the axis directly vertical, and represents the seasonal progression of the sun's movement. The daily air element is the azimuth, commonly measured from zero degrees at south and being positive towards westwards, as we can see on the diagram in the picture right now. Note that the azimuth is measured from south, not from the north as is being seen in the picture. Um, also be seen as the elevation angle, which is the counterpart to the zenith, just measured from the horizontal axis. To be seen in this figure is uh, the focal point, which also acts as the fixture for the receivers um, located at the front here. The axles are fixed to a large bearing allowing for rotation, um, to which also the azimuth tracking mechanism is connected. I'll show you that later. This second view of the rig shows the rear fixture for the dish to be mounted on, which is attached to the rear bearing. The tracking mechanism for the zenith movement is based on a lead screw allowing the rack to travel backwards and forwards. Next, let's look at how the parabolic dish is mounted to the rig. This view of the CAD model shows the bracket to which the dish is to be mounted on both sides. Next up, we can see the fixture attached to the back of the dish. This leads us to how it looks in practice. Note that there are no reflectors attached to the dish. The segments are currently being worked on and possibly being replaced by a single sheet of material. The objective of the project I was in charge of was to design the azimuth tracking mechanism. To begin with, the CAD models were available to me, and I had to learn the Autodesk Inventor Pro software. Students can download the software for free from the Autodesk website. I have included a link to the page as well. The CAD models will be available through the Dropbox collaboration folders provided to you by Tyke. The exploded views you are seeing right now show how the mechanism is assembled. With the use of Inventor, all parts were designed and evaluated by the integrated FEA environment. Another incredibly useful feature is the dynamic simulation environment through which movement can be imposed in an assembly. Once a simulation has been performed, governing forces can be output by the software and either exported to Excel or be used for further FEA analysis. Next, I've prepared an animation of a dynamic simulation. It shows how the concentrate attracts the sun, first the full zenith of movement, then the azimuth tracking. I find it very confusing when transitioning towards actually building the system after spending a lot of time in the simulation environment, so make sure you have tolerance to your part drawings and don't forget to ask the technicians for manufacturing advice as they know a lot how to reduce manufacturing time for example and to reduce mistakes. Here we can see the final mechanism in motion. 
A stepper motor controlled by an Arduino rotates the ball screw passing through the carriage. The nut to which the carriage is fixed imposes the motion, allowing the lever to push or pull the axle in the desired direction. This results in the azimuth tilting of the system. A large part of the project is dedicated to the programming to, of the Arduino microprocessing unit, short for MPU. It is a simple device which uses a C++-based coding language through which both tracking mechanisms can be controlled simultaneously. The software is free to download and has a large online community, so a lot of information can be found in online forums. The full code required to control the tracking mechanisms can be found either in my report or in a separate file, both of which are in Dropbox. Included at the end of this podcast are links to information and literature which may be useful when working on future projects. Thanks for listening.